Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn about international relations. Today we ask, what is a public good? And this begins our unit on the production and consumption of goods in the international system. Broadly, we can define a good based off of two traits, whether it is rival and whether it is excludable. So you have four different possible outcomes here, right? Based off of whether the item is rival or non-rival and whether it is excludable or non-excludable. So what we're going to do is we're going to define what rival and excludable mean and then fill in those possible options. Let's start with excludability. A good is excludable if its provider can effectively deny you access to it. So for example, my textbook, Game Theory 101, the complete textbook, is an example of something that's excludable. It's a book, so if you buy it, you have access to it. If you don't buy it, you don't have access to it. Now think about that in contrast to national defense. Say I'm the president of the United States, and I see you on the street, and I'm thinking to myself, I don't really like this guy. He watches too many of those Game Theory videos. I don't want to have him benefit from the national defense that we have in the United States. Well, that's simply ridiculous, right? Either the United States is safe or it's not, and the president can't really go around excluding particular individuals from receiving the benefits of being in a safe country. So that's the, the difference between excludable and non-excludable. Now we flip over to rivalry. A good is rivalrous if consumption by one individual does not interfere with another individual's consumption. So if you'll take a moment to humor me while I have a sip of this. The beer I'm drinking right now is Rival. The liquid that I just consumed is now slowly traveling down toward my stomach. That's liquid that you're never going to have. It's mine to keep forever, and you are not getting it. Compare that to the video that you're watching right now. It's possible that hundreds of people have watched this before you, and it's certainly the case that hundreds of people are going to be watching this after you. Your viewing this right now is not harming anyone who came before you, and it's not harming anyone who came or who's going to come after you. And likewise, any other viewing from other people is not harming your viewership right now. So this is non-rival because everyone is equally benefiting by having this video and watching it right now. Well, that gives us our table right here. And so we have rival excludable goods as private goods. We have non-rival excludable goods as club goods. We have rival non-excludable goods as common pool goods. And we call non-rival non-excludable goods public goods. So let's just fill in some examples here. A private good to start out with. I think you're probably most familiar with private goods because these are things that you purchase essentially. So the beer I'm drinking, that's an example of a rival excludable good. The beer company made sure that people who purchase the beer are the ones actually consuming it, so that means it's excludable, and it's rival because the beer that I'm consuming right now is inhibiting your ability to consume this very beer. Other rival excludable goods are anything that you essentially buy at a grocery store, the clothes that you're wearing, those are rival and excludable, and the car you own. Those are all rival excludable goods. Non-rival excludable goods, those club goods, what are some examples of that? Well, it's as it might seem, it sounds like a club. It is a club. So movie tickets, gym membership, those are club goods. They're people at the door, either at the movie theater or at the gym, that deny you access if you don't have the proper ticket or the proper membership. So you have to pay for membership at the gym or you have to pay for your movie ticket. Those are excludable goods, but they're also non-rival because as long as there aren't a million people in your gym, then it doesn't matter that other people are using it. You're still happy. And also just because there are other people in the movie theater isn't really inhibiting your ability to go see the film. Either the film is playing or it's not. Either there is a bench press machine or there is not. And so this is a non-rival good in either case, whether it's a movie ticket or a gym membership. On the bottom half, a rival non-excludable good that's a common pool good. The classic example of this is a fishery. So think about a fishery in the Pacific Ocean. It's basically impossible for anyone to exclude someone from going out into the middle of the Pacific and trying to fish. And it's also rival. So if you have multiple of these multiple boats out on the middle of the Pacific and they're all fishing, then any fish that one guy captures is going to take away from the hull of any other ship's capture. So that's why that's rival. And then on the last one, we have non-rival, non-excludable. We call that a public good. A couple of examples of public goods. The classic example is clean air, right? So 
I'm breathing clean air. So are you, hopefully, unless you live in China right now, in which case you're probably breathing really awful air given the problems that they're having. Either way, assume that you're in the United States. My ability to breathe this clean air is not inhibiting your ability to breathe this clean air, right? There's plenty of clean air to go around for both of us as long as we're living in a place with clean air. And it's also not excludable because I can't really prevent you from consuming this clean air. It doesn't really make much sense. Also, another example, pirates, right? So if pirates are out on, on the seas, then that's going to cause problems for anyone trying to, to cause shipping or to, to ship things from one place to another. But if you have safe seas, if someone is out patrolling the seas to make sure that pirates just aren't there, then this safe shipping, safe shipping lanes, those are non-rival, non-excludable, because it's hard for me to stop you from essentially taking your boat and going from point A to point B. And it's non-rival because if the pirates are gone, then the pirates are gone. And that's the end of it. So we see two different types of, of classifications, rival, non-rival, excludable, non-excludable. You see two or four different goods in, in, in outcomes. And you can also see here that I've split these into two different colors. We have the blue color, the excludable goods, and the red color, the non-excludable goods. The reason I did that is because it's very easy to produce excludable goods. The incentives are there to produce excludable goods. So the beer I'm drinking right now came from Stone Brewing Company in San Diego, California. The reason that Stone brews beers is because they know people are going to purchase them. I'm very happy to part with my money to drink their beer, and they're very happy to take my money. And the reason that they are able to actually take my money is precisely because the good is excludable. Likewise, movie theaters, gyms, they have incentive to go out and purchase the land and purchase the gym equipment or purchase the rights to show the particular movies because they know other people will come and pay to see the movie or to use the gym. In contrast, when you have non-excludable goods, you don't really have the incentive for someone to go out and produce that, right? What's my incentive to go out and produce clean air if it's going to be costly for me and my contribution to pollution is going to be so minimal that I'm not even going to really feel the effects of my own personal pollution. It's the combined pollution of everyone else that I'm really going to notice. And so when we talk about international relations and the consumption of goods, the issues really come in the bottom half in these non-excludable goods, whether it's a common pool good like the fishery or a public good like clean air. And so what we're going to be studying in this unit is how states mitigate the problems and actually ensure that non-excludable rival goods, those common pool goods, are available for use and also the public goods are actually being produced and being consumed. So that's what we're covering in this unit, and I hope to see you later on when we start talking more specifically about common pool goods and public goods. Hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you next time. Take care.